Let's go to Marcelino Frosflo da Costa. He is a dance instructor, founder of Canadian break dancing group Ground Illusion. Thanks for your time tonight. Hello, hello. Would How are you, you doing? I'm good. Would you consider break dancing a sport? Hmm. It's a, it runs a fine line. Meaning Sim what? Similar to capoeira, you know, it's both athletic. There's athleticism, there's athletics, but it's it's an art first and foremost. It's culturally sound in that regard. So, so how would you grade or judge it if it did cross over into competitive sport? Well, the way that it's judged currently, uh, there's several different categories that um, help to understand the aesthetic, and I think that won't necessarily change. But I think uh, when it crosses over to that um, Olympic platform, hopefully people are still understanding what what's going on in context with the actual history of it. So, you know, there's musicality, there's execution, and there's originality and things of that manner, but uh, yeah. Okay, so give me an idea of, of what you would look for uh, if you were judging a competition in this. I'm looking for people dancing the music, first of all, having an, an understanding of the foundation. They have to have a good sense of vocabulary. They have to be contributing something that's original. You've got to be creative. They have to be having a conversation that's sound with uh, you know, um, the right type of gestures and, 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 and points. Um, when I say points, it's kind of like you're having a discussion or a debate with somebody. You have to have sound, sound judgment and, and argument. And you mean there's a conversation going back and totally forth? There's totally a conversation going back and forth. And people who are usually winning the competitions or the battles, whether it's a, on a stage or kind of in a circle, um, they're making the most sense of the conversation through the music and showing that they're fluent with the original um, understanding of what the dance is. Uh, they have a, a good sense of the vocabulary and history, but they're also contributing something and they're being themselves. So, so how has it changed over the years? It's, it's evolved in terms of its format in regards to the technicality of the moves. Movements are more technical. There was a time where, you know, in the early 80s, it was very exploited in the mainstream and, um, you know, a lot of people were doing it but didn't really have an understanding of where things were coming from. And then, you know, within the 80s, it kind of late 80s it stopped but then in the early 90s there was a resurgence of trying to re-understand the foundation and creating new foundations of the dance. Okay so where does it come from because you, you keep referring to the fact that competitors need to understand that. Where did it come from? Well the roots of breaking uh, they're ancient they come they're, you know, they come from thousands of years ago but it was manifested in, in the Bronx in New York in the form that we know of today. So uh, what people don't necessarily understand is um, the essence of breaking uh, is rooted through the music and that music, musical rhythm and approach is something that's been happening in tribes and ancient cultures for many, many years, right? But the way that we see it as breakdancing or break into this day manifested through the Bronx. And I mean, even here in Toronto, we have our own um, variation and style of it that's based through the foundation. It's rooted in the music and syncopated rhythm and the funk. Um, people know as a hip hop these days and soul music. And uh, if we have an understanding of the foundations of what the music gives us and how we move to the music a particular way, then we have an understanding of the approach. And I think that's the most important. Because uh, essentially what you're supposed to do is do your own style through the dance, through the language, create your own slang, have your own opinion, and have your own way, which is often is a preconceived notion about what we do. It's just kind of like a physical feed and it's acrobatic, but everything we do is to the music. It's in a conversation. And every culture in the world has their own way that they do it. And the way that they do it is uh, significant to them and their personal story. Got it. All right. I do have to leave it there, but I appreciate you joining us on the program. Thanks so much for your time. Take care. Bye-bye.